Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Storytime. <laughs> After I feel like a little bit of a break, we will be jumping back into it. So we're going to do the Tomb of Ninhao. It's going to just be a basic guide to unlocking the boulder system and then of course getting the final reward, which is the little, I guess, piece of paper here, this mystical stage formulation, whatever you want to call it. Basically, um, we're going to reset that. I'm going to go back into it and we're just going to show you. Now, I did this on a previous video, but this one will just purely be me running this for this one. And then, um, yeah, if you have any questions, hit us up in the comment section down below. Obviously, join our Discord. The link is in the description box as well. Love to hear if this does assist you at some point. Um, I won't be able to tell you exactly where all the treasure chests are. What I would suggest though is if you can complete it on the first run, go ahead and complete this uh, and then do some explorations if that makes sense to get the rest of the treasure chests. As you can see, there's some free gold, there's some relics, uh, shards and of course the big one is the stamina pills. Now, what I would say is um, there's a couple of pathways to the boss. However, if you are trying to get this charm here, there is only really one route to go. So let's just jump in and do it. We'll explain a little bit more in depth about the functional sides of battle. Um, if you're up to this chapter though, you're probably already familiar with what the enemies can drop. Um, honestly, I would recommend being around, uh, I want to say between 1.5 to 2 billion power level, depending on your RNG. Um, these get annoying and a lot of people go, well, how do I do this PB because the rocks keep appearing? Um, so this is the pathway to get to the middle of the totem charm without getting the rocks to appear. Uh, in this screen here, if anyone's like wondering, the monsters are basically, uh, the, tr the game tries to give you hints about what the monsters do. So front row control effect, that sounds like Karkinen. However, these guys won't stay alive long enough to see it. <laughs> Obviously, we are a little bit overpowered for this, but being a part of the guide, I just want to give you the pathway examples. Um, and yes, of course, it would be nice to show you in a free-to-play capacity, which we'll probably do at some point a part of the Yawning Way account, um, absolutely. But for now, if you're up to this page, or this stage, I should say, in the game, there's no point waiting around for me to actually uh, do it on Yawning Way, because it's going to take a while for me to grind out the chapters anyway. So hopefully this will come in handy. Now all these fights are fairly generic. You're not going to fight any real hard uh, sort of boss type, um, I guess, encounters just yet. Uh, the last guy, like the actual boss of this stage, he can be a little bit tricky, but there are some tactics about how to get a, around that. So uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But what you want to do is you want to come all the way up here. You don't want to fight this one here. You don't want to fight this one. You want to fight this one that I'm standing in front of. Otherwise, you'll trigger a block and you won't get through. So it's kind of like just going around the outside, basically. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, when I did this, it did take me a couple of attempts to figure out the, the correct route. Um, some people don't have that luxury because, it, you know, obviously... Um, depending on your power level and difficulties behind it, you might just be like, shit, uh, you get like halfway through it and then you're, some of your heroes are dead. Um, absolutely understand that frustration. Honestly, when you're going to pick the uh, sort of artifacts, and I've said this before, pick what suits your team. So if you're lacking damage and you notice that uh, you're just not killing them quick enough, um, potentially pick anything that gives you that, that edge in damage like crit or... Um, I guess, raw damage itself, which is the damage bonus. Uh, if you're lacking sustainability, i.e., you know, you're getting the distance, you're doing damage, but your team is a little bit squishy, um, there are a couple of ones that you can acquire that give you health at the end of each round. Maybe we can show those in a second. No. Uh, and then, of course, there's some other ones that start a battle, reduces all enemies attack by 10%, which is kind of like a debuff, which isn't too bad as well. Now you've come up here, you've killed all of those, and lo and behold, the pathway is open for you. So this is in fact the correct pathway to go. You essentially only block off one stone, so don't be afraid when that happens. 
Then he basically goes into this whole spiel about you found all my traps. And then he unlocks basically access point to a treasure chest up here. So there's a treasure chest where I just tapped. So we'll go up there and show you. Um, and this is like the, I think this is the 40 stamina pill treasure chest, which is great. If your health is a little bit low, go to the pharmacy on your way back to fight the boss. So the little pharmacy is here. Might as well just grab that out because why not? Now for us to get to the boss, what we can do is we can fight this guy over here. And kill him off. So as you can see, there's probably about seven fights in total before you can get to the boss, which is, it is like a decent amount of battles for you to participate, knowing that you can't get healed from it, which I can, I can agree. It, it does increase the difficulty, um, particularly on the last stage for me. Uh, there's like way, way more than seven battles before I get to the last boss, uh, which of course we're going to be doing that video after uh, this one as well. Try and get this series out of the way. Um, for those that are kind of just wondering about how the fuck you can get through this shit, <laughs> don't worry, I got your back. Make sure if you haven't already, like, subscribe, hit that notification button. The like is for me, the subscription is for you and the channel, and of course, notification is for you as well. Um, I don't feel like there's there's an overly hard fight in this this sort of game mode, like they're all pretty generic teams that you verse. Uh, the, the thing that gets interesting is the fact they can use beasts, but that's really the, it's the same as beast realms, right? So you kind of just have to factor into the fact, well, ugh, combo charms and beasts. Anyway, this is the final boss of the stage. He is Zhao Shi. So the thing with Zhao Shi is he actually only transforms the back row. So if you put your tankiest heroes uh, up the back row or your support heroes at the back row and you put your DPS heroes in the front row, this fight's going to go a lot easier for you, particularly if you're at that stage where he is difficult and he is doing a lot of damage. Um, sometimes you can just sacrifice some of your support heroes in the back row and hope that your DPS is strong enough to kill Zaoshi. As you can see though, I mean, he uses Cyan Rook, so he has a heal ability over time on himself. He has an invulnerability ability too, so that can be frustrating. Essentially, it's going to be like whether or not you can kill him before he kills your back row. Because all his attacks focus the back row. So that's kind of, this is your trick technique, is to slot your best DPS uh, in the front row and basically try to burst him down as quickly as possible while your back row gets transformed and hopefully survives long enough for your DPS in the front row to kill him. If you are struggling, um, you might want to keep resetting the instance and just going to this boss directly and I'll show you how to get to him directly. Um, although you could potentially like, it, it's up to you, right? So there is a technique to do it. So as you can see, if you go from the starting point, which is here, this is the one you fight. This is the one you fight after it. Then you go up here and this is the boss fight right here. Um, obviously, this way is not open though. So you're going to have to still, you're still going to have to go through the whole process. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's not really skipping out, is there? Now that I think about it, you can't really skip ahead of that. But if you want to practice on the boss, I guess that's the easiest way to do it. Um, not, not that anybody really wants to practice on that dude. Uh, but if you're getting stuck for like raw damage, it is, I know it's a time consuming process, but if you just reset the instance, do the same route that I showed you in the beginning to get to him, and then hopefully with the right RNG, these little things will drop you damage um, or damage debuffs which could help you out. It could be the make or break if you are a, a very close to finishing it off, but you can't get there because you're missing like some damage or some sustain. Maybe try to re-roll a couple of times, um, reset the instance, keep going around, do the same pathway. Hopefully the tents would drop you something that could be a game changer for you. Whether or not that's like damage or anything like that. If you're ever like curious about it, go into your backpack. Um, power of time backpack and you can pick out like you know obviously you can't pick them out but you can see what ones do what 
So charity is a healing one. This is a debuff. Blade of Sorrows. Whenever an an ally is killed, all allies gain 30% attack. This is kind of like a, you know, uh, I guess a way of buffing your team. Um, you know, you never know, right? That 30% attack could be enough for you to kill Zhao Shi. Uh, whenever an enemy is killed, you gain 10% attack and defense. I mean, they're pretty generic, but you never know. These could be the ones that make it or break it for this instance. As for where the other, like, chests are, I think there's a chest over here. And there's a chest over here. And there's obviously a chest there. And I believe there was a chest around here as well. Um, don't quote me on where all they are. It's been a long time since I've actually checked those out. Anyway, hopefully that's helped you out a little bit, even if it was just an explanation of what pathway to go to. Honestly, I'd recommend attempting that after around 1.5 to 2 billion power level. You really shouldn't have too much of an issue. Um, maybe a little bit RNG dependent, um, but like I said, there are some techniques and tactics to try to boost your DPS or survivability. Let me know in the comment section below if that helped you out at all. And I will be doing a straight run of stage 4, or should I say story mode chapter 4 in a little bit, Rising Light. Um, as you can see, I haven't finished that yet, so I kind of want to do that while we do like a live sort of example. Instead of me just showing you the pathway, I kind of want to do it with you all. Um, honestly, though, spoiler alert, you probably need to be around 5 billion to finish off Rising Light, uh, give or take, depending on the buffs that you can get. But then again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.